Maritime Spatial Planning in the Celtic Sea Become a Maritime Spatialist within 10 minutes It starts with chaos Sometimes it seems as if no one looks after the Celtic Sea it is overused and under pressure from cumulative activities Who has responsibility for managing these competing uses and protecting its natural resources? The chaos goes on. Sometimes it also seems as if everyone governs the Celtic Sea. It is a labyrinth of rules, rights and responsibilities with too many parties chasing sectoral and national interests. And on. A jungle of rights, powers, responsibilities and national interests could make progress in the Celtic Sea really slow. Fortunately, there is a solution. It's called Maritime Spatial Planning, MSP. Sounds complicated and technical, but in fact MSP has already been used for thousands of years. How did we do it before? If, for example, 1,000 years ago, nine tribal clans wanted to use the Celtic Sea, what did they do? Of course, the first approach might have been to go to war with everybody else to try to own it. But what if this was not an option? The clans would probably understand that they needed to sort it out more peacefully. How would they go about it? Would everybody negotiate with everybody? Would there be a gigantic and arduous debate between thousands of tribal people discussing fishing, ports irrigation, housing, territory, protected areas? Does this ring a bell? Doesn't it look a little like what happens in the Celtic Sea region today? This approach often leads to greater chaos. What should the tribes do instead? The clan chiefs would probably take charge of negotiating an agreement on behalf of, but in consultation with, their clans. But there are many different ways in which the sea can and will be used. Care must also be taken to protect the vulnerable species and biodiversity. How would they have sorted it out? Firstly, the tribal chiefs would define common ground guidelines that all can agree to, to avoid tribes acting purely in their own interests. The health of the sea must always be secured, so demands have to be adjusted to ensure they are met within the limits of the ecosystem. Today, this is referred to as adopting an ecosystem-based approach. Secondly, they would give all users and tribes a voice in the debate. In maritime spatial planning today, this is referred to as adopting a participatory approach. All uses must be considered and opportunities must be provided for these voices to be heard. Thirdly, they would define sea use rights, which today would be done by spatial zoning. How should we do it now? That's how smart leaders sorted it out, back when the problems were comparatively simple and understandable. Nowadays, the number of different uses and their intensity has grown enormously and continues to do so. The good news is that the same methodology applies as much today as it did back then. MSP must be a high priority issue, in this case effective governance at a regional level. MSP requires guiding principles, mainly an ecosystem-based approach. MSP needs a participatory approach. All uses must be considered. All user groups must be heard and involved. A zoning approach is essential. Today's management of the Celtic Sea does not look so very different. However, today there are more people living around the sea, 
and it has been regarded as a free resource to be used by everybody with few restrictions. This has meant that the Celtic Sea has become too small to meet all the demands for space. On land we use spatial planning to solve these problems. There are many restrictions on the use of land which are no longer recognized as limitations because life on land would not be possible without them. When we have a growing need to use the sea for shipping, offshore wind farms, fisheries and nature conservation, we need a similar spatial planning system for managing these uses. The Celtic Sea is a sea shared by multiple countries with different languages and different systems of governance. We need a tool to sort out the sometimes conflicting uses. Happily, maritime spatial planning offers us this very tool. But how does it work? Maritime spatial planning is the tool that can help sort out complex challenges on a crowded planet. Maritime spatial planning sounds awfully complicated, but in fact it isn't. Some definitions and explanations. The UNESCO defines maritime spatial planning as Maritime spatial planning, MSP, is a public process of analyzing and allocating the spatial and temporal distribution of human activities in marine areas to achieve ecological, economic and social objectives that are usually specified through a political process. www.unesco.org MSP can be described as a multiple step process of developing a joint vision, assessing the capacity of a sea area as well as identifying the potential users of the sea. Defining areas that fit best to the corresponding uses and defining what is allowed and what has to be restricted to keep the sea area healthy and productive in the long term. The final product will be a plan which should have a legal obligation to comply with. After a certain period such a plan has to be reviewed and updated to take account of changes that may have occurred. Maritime Spatial Planning in Six Steps 1. Start the process by assessing the need and will to undergo an MSP process based on a vision, planning principles and a defined legal framework and strategies. 2. Undertake initial stock taking and systematic assessments of suitable areas for relevant sea uses. 3. Find out compatibilities and conflicts of claims for use in an interactive process with stakeholders and based on sound mapping and analysis. 4. Draft a maritime spatial plan with zoning of areas for specific uses or objectives. Discuss the draft plan including detailed regulations for the zones with stakeholders. 5. Produce a final maritime spatial zoning plan, including regulations for management and monitoring, and obtain final stakeholder comments. 6. Adopt the plan and organize implementation and monitoring. What it could look like. 1. In a suitability map, the sea areas are mapped and classified according to their suitability for certain uses based on the best scientific and stakeholder knowledge, including areas important for the fish growth and reproduction, areas with good conditions for offshore wind farms, ideal shipping routes, areas that secure healthy biodiversity, routes where cables and pipelines can be placed securely, areas with resources like minerals, oil or others. We will now demonstrate with an example in the Baltic Sea.
what it could look like too. On a second map, existing and sometimes overlapping or conflicting uses and interests are displayed. It becomes obvious where conflicts arise and where solutions must be negotiated and decided. The map only illustrates the conflicts. The solutions will have to be found following the agreed goals, principles and priorities. This happens through a process of involving authorities, stakeholders and interest groups to establish a formal set of regulations for all uses. What it could look like 3. The ultimate goal should be a maritime spatial zoning plan that identifies and manages current and future sea uses in a way that best meets the priorities and goals set by the participants. The plan should be adopted by a formal political decision and supported by the development of management structures that deliver implementation and monitoring as well as managing and granting any necessary permits and restrictions for certain uses in each area. As a result, the plan will be the guiding document for future development and management of the sea.